Well, good evening. I want to welcome you to First Baptist Church. I know a lot of you. I see some people I don't know. My name's Heath Lambert. I'm the senior pastor here. We are so thankful to have you here with us. We, uh, we get together almost every Sunday night so that our uh, children and students can grow in the grace of Jesus and so our adults can grow in the grace of Jesus and we study the Bible and sing songs and do all sorts of things together but every now and then we get the opportunity to do something very special and that's what we are doing here tonight. We're thankful that you can be here for this special concert with Charles Billingsley. And uh, if you were here this morning, you know that uh, we were led uh, in worship uh, by him this morning very wonderfully. He uh, is... Uh Orchestra, uh, who always, week in and week out, does an exceptional job here at First Baptist. And he's got several members of his band who are here with him tonight, so we're glad that you guys are joining us as well. We're also thankful uh, if you're uh, joining us on the live stream that you're uh, able to be with us that way. I will tell you that uh, our, we're thankful to be here for a concert. Uh, we're thankful to be here together and all the things that that means. The reason we do every single thing we do at First Baptist Church is because we love Jesus Christ. Amen. We say every week that we have a very clear mission, and that is that we want to reach all of Jacksonville with all of Jesus for all of life. We are here tonight doing this because we want you to grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, all of life, all of eternity is about Jesus and his name and his glory. Uh, there is no hope, there is no life, there is no joy without him. We want, uh, if you don't know Jesus, we want you to come to know him by turning from your sin and trusting in his life and in his death and his resurrection. Uh, when our Evening is over together tonight. Uh, as you leave, you'll see some next step stations, and we have some wonderfully faithful servants of our church who'd love to talk with you uh, about how you can uh, come to know Jesus Christ. If you're watching online or listening online and you can't be here in person, there's some information on your screen where you can reach out to us, and somebody who loves Jesus is going to reach out to you uh, and help you know how you can walk more closely with Jesus Christ. We are so thankful that you are here, and what I'm going to do before we get started is pray, and then I'm going to hand it over to Charles Billingsley. So let's go to the Lord. Father, we are thankful in Jesus' name to be together. We are thankful as a church for all the things that we get to do together. We're thankful tonight to sing and to be sung to. We are thankful for Charles's ministry and the ministry of the First Baptist Choir and Orchestra. We pray that as you that you would come to us tonight, that you would lift our hearts to heaven, that we would know and love you more because we are together, that when this is over, we wouldn't have just enjoyed some wonderful music, but we would have been brought to the throne of grace and strengthened in the mercy of Jesus. And we pray it in Jesus' name, amen. Well, good evening, everybody. How are you? It is good to see you tonight. I'm just curious, how many First Baptist folk do we have here tonight? Oh, wow, okay. Anybody not from First Baptist you just came to hang out with us this evening? Anybody like that? Oh, well, we got lots of folks. Come on, let's thank them for being here. <laughs> and I know that we have a couple of fairly big football games going on today. I was just telling Scott, I'm kind of kind of thankful that the Jaguars didn't make it or else nobody would be in here tonight. <laughs> Uh, your, uh, your life is like mine. I'm a big Cowboys fan, and it's just, uh, it's been a hard 25 years. It really has. Uh, so, uh, but we are glad to be here, man. I tell you what, let's just, uh, let's just stand together. And uh, I just want to start tonight by just worshiping with you a little bit, a little song that everybody knows. Uh, let's just go to the Lord and give him the praise and the glory and the honor that's due his name and, and his name alone. Let me hear you sing it. In the splendor of the king, 
It's kind of known as a hymn that Paul wrote in verses 5 through 11, where Paul tells us that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess <laughs> the name of Jesus, the name which is above every name. And so I just thought um, it'd be great just to let you sing this little bridge. It says, name above all names, worthy of all praise. And I'm just going to let you carry it. What's so cool, I wish every one of you could stand right here where I'm standing because it's so cool. I got like it's totally 360 here in this room and I can just hear you all singing it's a it's a great environment to sing in so you take it first time and I just want to hear you lift your voices okay it's just gonna be you and keys all right let me hear you sing it name above all names name above all names worthy Sing it again, name above all names. Name above all names. Oh God, you're worthy, worthy of all praise. Oh, my heart will sing, my heart will sing. How great is our God. Can we sing that one more time? Name above all names. You're worthy. 
to stay on your feet, all right, and sing this song that we taught you this morning. But as you're doing that, why don't you find about four people, hit them on the shoulder, and just say, hey, I'm about to sing louder than you. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Say hello. <laughs> How about we do one more, and then I'll let you sit down for the rest of the night. How's that? Can you just do one more with me? You did this song like two years ago, and it's been a little while, but it's a song that's written right out of Colossians chapter 1, a song that one of our students at Liberty wrote, and we decided to record it and uh, didn't have any idea that uh, suddenly it would catch fire and kind of get sung all over the world. I think 130 countries now are singing this song somewhere, someplace. But uh, it'd be kind of fun for you just to get a little reminder because it's, it's an older song now. It's like, what, 10 years old? Ancient. 13. <laughs> 13? Is it really 13 years old? 
Good grief. Time flies, doesn't it? Okay, well, let's do it. This is how the chorus goes, all right? It goes like this. We bless you, Lord, God of the ages, highest of all, we magnify you. Your name will be exalted, exalted. Try it once more. We bless you, Lord, God of the ages, highest of all, we magnify you. Your name will be exalted, exalted. Now that's the chorus. How many of you remember that little song? Okay, good. About 18 of you. So all 18 of you sing really loud, and the rest of us are going to catch up, all right? Right out of Colossians chapter 1. Mm. He is the edge of the invisible God, the firstborn of creation. He is the first the last, the one who matters most. Mm -hmm. He is creator, ruling sustainer of all. He holds it all together. He is the word of God, the hope for His name is lifted higher, Jesus, your name is lifted higher. You ready? We bless you, Lord, God of the ages, highest of all, we magnify you, your name.
the fun going because I enjoy singing this song. This is a little song that I wrote, uh, and it came out the weekend of <laughs> the week I was laying in a hospital bed with COVID. And it's just a song that just is entitled, I Was Made For This. <laughs> Can you give me some more of that video? But... Creation sings a melody to the maker of all life. The lakes and trees, the galaxies, lift high the name of Christ. The and soar, the oceans roar, but they are not enough to shout the praise of a Savior's grace and the wonders of His love. Colossians 1, that same chapter we just read out of, or quoted in that song before, God of the Ages, is really a great reminder of that. In fact, that very chapter says that all things were created by Jesus and for Jesus. Did you ever think about that? You were created for him. It will change how you think, won't it? It will change how you make decisions. It will change uh, the things you do. The things you say, 
when you consider that everything you do in your entire life is really for the sole purpose of glorifying Him. And there may be some of you here tonight, and that's really a, a foreign thought to you because you've never really considered surrendering your life to Him. Well, I hope that you will before tonight's over because, I mean, you can do a lot of things and you can live a fun life, a successful life, a wealthy life. You can do all kinds of things in this life without the Lord. But when you get to the end of your journey and you don't know him, then you missed out on the whole purpose you're alive. You're on this planet for one sole purpose, to bring glory and honor to the one who created you and put you here. And you know the one who created you and put you here has a plan and a purpose for your life? He really does. So if you came in here tonight and your life is all about you and trying to succeed and, you know, carry yourself through the journey, what's going to happen is you're going to get to the end of that journey and you're going to look into the depths of your soul and it's going to be empty. So if there's an emptiness in your soul tonight, you came to the right place because you just happen to walk into a room where we're just going to lift up the name of Jesus for the next, oh, I don't know, four or five hours. And we're just going to enjoy who he is. And we're just going to praise his holy name. And in the midst of that praise, the Bible says if, if he's lifted up, he'll draw all men to him. So we're just going to lift up the name of Jesus. And in the process, I'm hoping that if there's an emptiness in your soul, you'll get caught up in this, in this what we call the Holy Spirit moving. And that you just surrender your heart to him. Because he's the only way, he's the only truth, he's the only life, and he's the only way that you can leave this room tonight with hope, not just a temporary hope, but an eternal one. So that's the purpose of us being here, to lift up the name of Jesus and to draw people to him who don't know him. That's it. And we're not going to be real long or real boring. We won't go four or five hours, probably just two or three. But I'm just happy to be back in my home church. It's so cool to be in this room. Y'all, I sang my first solo ever in a church in this room right here, sitting right here on this platform, right here on that floor right there. First one ever. Did you know that? Huh? It was my tribute. You remember that one? How can I say thank you? And it was funny, too, because uh, they did a <laughs> Pastor, you may have heard this recording. It, it, there's actually a recording of it. And uh, what key are you in there, maestro? Uh, whatever one you play want. Play something. Just play that. How. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, what? Uh, uh. Can you just pick a note? Just pick one. Any okay. of them. <laughs> I don't care. But, okay, how can I? That, I like that. That's good, yeah. So, um, by the way, that's Adam Lancaster. Y'all welcome, Adam. <laughs> hey, Adam. Hey, Charles. <clears throat> Adam's been traveling with me for 19 years, and, and whenever I start into something like this, I have this uncanny ability, Dr. Ed, to pit a pitch that's in between pitches. It's a real blessing. Like, I can hit quarter pitches like nobody's business. <laughs> it's, uh, it's really kind of embarrassing. But... Um, <clears throat> Adam's been traveling with me for 19 years. He's uh, married to a beautiful wife named Lisa. He's got four children. Uh, his oldest daughter is named after the 80s praise band Journey. You might have heard of them. But, uh, oh, God. <laughs> you do that song a lot here, Pastor? Just a small town girl. No? It's never happened before, <laughs> Scott said. I can't believe I just sang that at first Baptist. I'm sweating. But anyway, <laughs> he's got four children. They're all incredible. By the way, and, the, and the, back there is, is, is Juan. He's our bass, uh, bass player, <laughs> bass, bass player. And uh, we like to say we only have Juan bass player, uh, Juan Dugan. There he is. And back there is Mark Lamontane on the drum. So y'all welcome all three of these guys. Okay, now you feel about <laughs> So... I won't do the whole song, but here, this is really what happened. It was my first time to sing in big church, you know. And, and what happened is, is I was singing about, uh, uh, well, i tell you where I used to sit. Up there in that balcony, they were red pews. Do y'all remember that? They were, in fact, everything in here was red. The whole thing was just red. And I remember sitting back there, and I used to get called out by Kenny St. John, our youth pastor, all the time for talking. And, you know, can you believe I'd be talking? Can you imagine me talking in church? 
but I'd be goofing off. And so one Sunday, I just happened to be down on the floor. And it was a Wednesday night. In fact, I had my friend Jason Dillaberry with me, and he was an offensive lineman uh, at, at our school, and I played running back at Orange Park High School. And I'll never forget that night, Pastor, because we had sometimes on Wednesday nights and Sunday nights, because, you know, it was Sunday night, Sunday morning, Wednesday night, Sunday, and, and we would kneel to pray. And this particular night, Jason was such a big old dude. Like, he was six, like six, seven, 380 pounds. He was huge. And we kneeled down in between these pews because we're supposed to kneel. And then he got stuck between the pews. <laughs> and I'm telling you, that's the hardest I've ever laughed in church. <laughs> and so that kind of set us off. And then I started goofing off during the hymns. And so I started singing like operatically or something like that. And uh, <clears throat> the guy behind me was a guy named Grady Robinson. And he goes, hey, man, you got a good voice. You need to sing for our Sunday school class. And I said, uh, no, thank you, but no thanks. And the next Sunday, he walks up to me with a track in his hand, an old Steve Green song called Wounded Soldier. And he goes, hey, you're on next week. And I said, what? He said, no, no, I put you on next week. You need to do this. You, need, you got a good voice. You should do this. And I thought, I've never done this before. But he handed it to me in front of all my football playing buddies. And I felt the peer pressure. And I was like, okay. So I show up the next Sunday on the sixth floor of the administration building. I walk in, and I, they put that little track in, and I sang the song. And a guy named Rick Stone and a guy named Camp Kirkland were standing in the back of the room. And I'll never forget that moment because even though I was sweating bullets, it just seemed like the most natural thing to me. And they asked me to sing for our choir tour that was coming up with our youth choir and orchestra. And they said, and one of the songs that we're going to have you do, um, I think Ed Dickinson had just done an arrangement for it, my tribute. And they had me do it on a Wednesday night here for church. And I'll never forget how it went because this is what I did. How can I say th <coughs> thanks? <laughs> That's exactly what I did. And here's the best part. It's on an album like that. <laughs> what a blessing. Anyway, I won't do the whole song, but that's how it started. And uh, since then, do you know, I went to college and started singing a little bit. We started a little quartet here called the Four Gospels. Now that I think about it, Pastor, that was a pretty arrogant name, actually. The Four Gospels. I mean, how could we find? We named ourselves the Four Gospels. I don't know if I was Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, to be honest with you, but I was one of them. Anyway, we started singing a little bit, and then I went to college, and then after college, I just decided this is what the Lord had called me to do, and I just jumped into it. I graduated May 23rd of 1992 from college, did my first concert on May 24th. And you know that coming up this May 24th, that'll be 30 years ago. And the Lord has taken me to all kinds of countries, and I've done over 3,400 concerts. And every bit of it started on a Wednesday night right here at First Baptist Church of Jacksonville. And I just want to tell you thanks. So I just wanted to tell you thanks. And, uh, you know, through the process of doing albums and things we start writing songs and one day Adam and I were sitting in my living room and I said you know I've been really looking at John 316 and John 316 is a obviously an incredible verse another guy from this church Tim Tebow used to wear it underneath his eyes in during every football game and uh, you know it's amazing what that one little verse has done in history but I started looking at that verse and the word world really jumped out on me and I thought, man, you know, I wonder really, when I look at who is my world, I realize that my world is people that vote like me and dress like me and think like me and have the same politics and the same, you know, social economic status and all that. And I realized that my world was just really, really small. And so the Lord took me to places like Guatemala and uh, the Ukraine and other places. And through the process of doing some missions work, I discovered the world is a lot bigger than my little circle. It's certainly bigger than what's just inside these walls. So as I sing you this song, can I just ask you tonight, who's your world? Do you remember that verse, John 3, 16? We all learned it from the King James Version, didn't we? For God so loved the world, say it with me, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. Every preacher in the pulpit, 
Every cynic on the street, every poet, every pauper, every traitor, every thief, every soldier, every liar, every TV talk show star, anybody teaching students, anybody tending bar. God so loved the world. God so loved the world. Every judge and every jailer, every master, every slave, every rebel, every skeptic. Them with a genuine heart, even though they don't vote like you. <laughs> Listen, I, it was last year when I finally figured out God loves Democrats and Republicans. He really does. <laughs> he really does. Hmm. And I don't agree with all of them, but you know what? I still got to love them. How many of you have a relative that you love because you have to, but you don't like them that much? Yeah. Sure you do. Maybe have a neighbor the same way. But you know what? You start looking people through the eyes of Christ. It makes it a lot easier to love them. Because you realize just how much Jesus loved you. Aren't you thankful that we have salvation and hope in Jesus? I was six years old when I met him. He came into my heart and forgave me of my sins. And I've messed up a whole lot. 
but I'm so grateful to know that no matter what happens, I serve a Savior who's never going to leave me, who's never going to forsake me, who is King of kings and Lord of lords and wonderful master and Savior. And here's the best part to me, a friend that sticks closer than a brother. His name is Jesus. Just say the name, Jesus. Jesus only. Jesus. Who has the power to raise the dead? And who can save us from our sin? He is our hope, our righteousness. Jesus, only Jesus. And who can make the blind to see? Who holds the keys that set us free? He paid it all to bring us peace. Jesus, only Jesus. Know the chorus it goes like this Holy King Almighty Lord, saints and angels, all on our join with them and bow before Jesus, only Jesus. Who can?
Jesus, the only one who can save us, the one who is above all, surrounds all, over all. There is no one, no creation, no being, nothing that stands higher, more powerful, more meaningful, nothing, no one. Colossians 1 again reminds us he is the preeminent one under all which all creation, all of the things that you see and have heard throughout history and in the future, everything falls under King Jesus. And I don't know how you feel, but in a crazy world like we're going through, that brings me a lot of comfort to know that I am under the shadow of the wings of the Almighty. And here's the best part. Like I said earlier, the Bible promises us that he'll never leave us and he'll never forsake us. <laughs> Isn't it nice to know that we worship a Savior who's the same yesterday, today, and forever? And no matter what it is you're going through, he's ever constant and he's ever sure. Have you guys enjoyed the last two years? It's been pretty awesome, hasn't it? <laughs> I'm telling you, man, <clears throat> I keep thinking this, this whole mess is going to be over, but it's, uh, it's not. I don't know about you, but I've lost many friends to COVID. Thought I was going to be one of those numbers myself, actually, a couple years back. <clears throat> But in the midst of that, you begin to question all kinds of stuff. When the world shuts down and you got nothing left to do, especially if you're in the hospital dealing with this virus, you get a lot of time to think. <clears throat> it's either that or watch the world shut down on the news, and that's no fun. So I had a lot of time to think, as you did. And I hope that you um, took the time while the world was shut down to just consider your life, the condition of your soul. John Piper, um, he said this in a message and I just happened to be listening to his, one of his messages as I was laying in the hospital bed on that Friday after uh, I went in. I went in Thursday night before Easter. And so on Good Friday, April 10th of 2020, I was laying in the hospital bed and <clears throat> my friend Ike Riker, he told me a long time ago, he said, look, when you face a crisis, you can get one of two ways. You can either become bitter or you can get better. And I'll be honest with you, the first 12 or 15 hours in that hospital bed, I was not getting better. I was just flat out bitter. I was mad about the whole situation. I was angry at the whole world shutting down. I was... I felt rotten and I just, I didn't want to be there, full of anxiety and depression and anger and all those things. And I don't know why, but on that Friday, I just started determining in my heart and spirit <clears throat> to, uh, to get better through this. And even though I felt horrible, I started listening to a few messages, and I, I don't know why, I, I listened to this message from John Piper, and he said this in his message. He said, hey, for somebody out here who's listening to me today, um, you're struggling with cancer, don't, don't waste your cancer. And I mean just as clear as a bell in my spirit, the Holy Spirit said to me, hey, Charles, don't waste your COVID. I've got you sitting in this hospital bed for a reason. Let me deal with you. You know, God will put you on your back every once in a while and get your attention. And it's no fun. I was talking to Scott about it at lunch today. Here's the thing. If you really want to learn how to worship the Lord, you're not going to learn how to do that on the mountaintop, y'all. You learn to worship the Lord in the midst of the valley, don't you, Mary? just as how it is and mountaintops are cool and everything have you ever climbed one they're nice but look around there ain't a whole lot up there <laughs> air's pretty thin 
You don't, you're not going to go shopping in the mall at the top of the mountain. You know why? There's not much space. Air's thin. It's hard to get to. But it's so cool to stand on top of that mountain and look around. And every once in a while, the Lord will give us little mountaintop experiences, maybe a concert or a Sunday morning or just your private closet of prayer. Enjoy those moments. But next mountaintop experience you have with the Lord, just take a deep breath and look around and just realize that your Christian life is one mountaintop experience. But yes, there's a vast array of other mountaintops yet to be explored. But in order to really enjoy the mountaintops in your Christian life, to get from one mountaintop to the next, you got to go back down to the valley. That's called spiritual growth. It's also just life. In the process of learning how to worship the Lord, He has taken me through some valleys. My pastor always used to say, you're either in a valley or you're going into a valley or you're just coming out of a valley how's that for an encouraging word from your pastor huh but it's true and I was going through a valley when we wrote this song I didn't know where I was supposed to live didn't know what I was supposed to be doing I wanted to leave then I wanted to stay then I wanted to stay then I wanted to leave I didn't know what to do then I ended up talking to one of my friends playing racquetball one day and I'd been counseling with him for two years, helping him get his marriage back together and stuff. And I was explaining to him how frustrated I was about this situation that I was in and not knowing where to go or what to do. And, and with tears in his eyes, he just put his hand on my shoulder and he said, well, you know what I think? I think if it was for me alone, you're right where you're supposed to be. And I went home that afternoon and I called my songwriting buddy. And I said, I think I need to write a song about this. So maybe you're in a valley right now. I don't know what that valley might be. But I can tell you this. If you're walking with the Lord, it could be that you're right where he wants you. Open your heart and mind to him. You said you believe God works in all things for your good. You've seen enough to always trust his heart. But now life is hitting harder than you ever thought it could. The light of hope is threatening to go dark. You pray you'll see the seasons change, asking for a brighter day. Could it be God's best for you is in this very place? What if blessings come from rocky roads the faithful have to climb? What if growing faith looks like an old fight you're facing one more time? What if God is working perfectly in ways you're soon to see? Then maybe you're right where you're supposed to be. Ooh. Oh, I know you're growing weary and so tired of how things are. Voices saying, run, don't be a fool Cause the hardest thing sometimes is waiting with a patient heart and not get ahead of what God plans to do There could be something good that waits in store The very thing you're praying for It may be time to just be still and know What if blessings come from rocky roads the faithful have to climb? What if growing faith looks like an old fight you're facing one more time? What if God is working perfectly in ways you're soon to see? Then maybe you're right where you're 
supposed to be. You're in the grip of His grace, in the palm of His hand, maybe the eye of the storm is the center of His plan. What if blessings come from rocky roads the faithful have to climb? What if growing faith looks like an old fight you're facing one more time? What if God is working perfectly in ways you're soon to see? Then maybe you're right where you're supposed to be. Oh, oh maybe supposed to be yes or maybe you're right where you're supposed to be some hard times there's gonna be some dark nights there's gonna be some deep pain there's gonna be some tough fights I'm gonna walk some steep roads feel like there's no hope I might have to wait years on answers I'm praying for through fire This one thing remains I can say God is good Even when he's not understood If he gives or he takes His love will never change He's given me the proof Cause when I look at the cross Every doubt just falls apart I have been redeemed No need of none of thankful that the goodness of God is available to all. Hmm? 
You know, and it's funny, when you look at your life and what you're going through, sometimes it takes a valley to really appreciate the mountaintops, doesn't it? Sometimes it takes a little bit of war to really appreciate the peace. Sometimes it takes hard times to really appreciate the good ones. Mm. We were talking about these things one day, and then in the midst of the conversation, I said something like this. Yeah, but isn't it nice to know that no matter what it is, Jesus is right there in the center of it all. So we just decided to stop right then and there and write this little song. And it's funny because when I was laying in the hospital bed with COVID almost two years ago now, having a hard time breathing, I had a record come out, that song I told you made for this, that was the title cut, and it came out that day, and I thought of all the days that I'm in the hospital with COVID-19, I have a record that's being released. And I thought, well, nobody else is gonna hear it, I might as well listen to this thing. So I, <laughs> I just started listening to the record, and I got down to track number four, and it was this song. And we had written it a year prior, and I thought, wow, Lord, how good is this, that God would give us this song to speak into the hearts of men and women and children and, and just a lot of people, to speak into their hearts and remind them that even in the midst of a pandemic, he's right there in the center of it all. There's a different kind of peace in the middle of the storm there's a different kind of strength when the weakness makes us strong there's a different kind of healing that cures the in our soul oh and it's a different kind of hope more than we see it's who we know amen so we will praise you in the center praise you in the center of it all in the center our response as his children we're just gonna keep praising you we're just gonna keep praising you we're just gonna keep praising you through it all we're just gonna keep praising that's right we're just gonna keep 
praising you. So we're just going to keep praising you through. It never stops. So we're not gonna stop praising you. Hey, we're not gonna stop praising you. Oh, we're not gonna stop praising you. Hey, oh, we're not gonna stop praising you. Hey, we're not gonna stop praising you. Hey, we're not gonna stop praising you. Hey, we're not gonna stop praising you. I'm gonna trust you, Lord. I'm gonna keep praising you. Through the earth. When you know the war's already won, amen. Oh, and it's a different kind of power when by your death we've all Thank you, Father, that you are with us. You are with us. You are Emmanuel. You are Savior. And as King of kings and Lord of lords, we bow before you. But, Lord, we also just are so grateful that you stand beside us as our friend. You stand behind us, Lord, as, as a mighty fortress and our protector and our provider. And you go before us, Lord, as our shield. And you wrap your arms around us, Lord, as our healer and comforter. And you forgive us, Lord, as our savior. We're just grateful for who you are and for what you've done in our lives tonight, God. It's to you that we give our thanks and our praise for being in the center of every tragedy, of every heartache, of every one of those horrible phone calls, of every horrible accident. But Lord, also, even in the midst of the mundane, just the everyday stuff, you're always there with us guiding us, protecting us.
ministering to us. And we are grateful, Lord. When peace like a river attended my way and when I can hear some of y'all sneaking in. I like it. In fact, you know what? Let's just go there. I'll sing a little line and then you do that little repeat thingy, okay? It is well, it is well. Yeah. And just sing the melody. If you want to pick a part, do a part. If you don't know what a part is or the melody, just make a noise of some sort, okay? I just want to hear you. It is well. Found some new ones for you, Scott. <laughs> With my soul. This glorious thought, oh my sin, not in part, but the whole is nailed to that cross. And thank you, Lord, I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. Oh,
Can I just ask you something? How is it with your soul? Is it full of the Holy Spirit? Do you know that you know if you die tonight, you've got a home in glory? Because if you don't, you can. You really can. I even mentioned it early on tonight, like four hours ago. Remember when I was talking about your soul? Listen, you can try it all. You can try anything you want, relationships, money. In fact, Dr. Vines, the pastor here, used to say it this way. He said, you know, it's like we're all just born in this pit. And everything in the world comes by the top of the pit and says, hey, you know, if you'll just try this or try that, you can get out of the pit. And so you try it. And for just a little while, it makes you happy. But you wake up after the party or after the night out with the, somebody you didn't even know or, or the addiction or the pornography or whatever it might be. And, you, and, and, and after all the thrill of that is over, you look around and you're still in the pit. But you see, that's what makes Jesus so different, y'all. He doesn't just come across the top of the pit and look down and say, well, you know what, if you'll just wear the right things and make enough money and do all this stuff, I'll give you a list. If you'll start doing all that, you'll get your way out of the pit. No, that's called a cult. The difference between a cult and Christianity is simply this. Jesus doesn't stand at the top of the pit and ask you to crawl out yourself. No, no, no. He crawls down into the pit with you. You see. And he wraps his arms of love around you and he says, hey, come to me. If you're weak, you're sinful, you're weary, worthless. And by the way, we all are. He says, come on, come to me. Give you rest. I'll save your soul. Are you like that? Are, are you empty tonight? If you are, here's what we're going to do. We're not going to do anything real fancy, okay? But here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads right where you are. Pastor, you stand right here next to me for just a moment. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to ask you to raise your hand. If you're looking for hope and peace in your life and you're empty, simply raise your hand. There's two people in this entire room looking, me and Pastor. And we're not going to call you out by name. We're not going to embarrass you. All I want you to do is look up and hold up your hand so we can see you and catch our eye. And here's what I want you to do. When we're done tonight, come down and meet this pastor right here at the front and take him on the hand and simply say this, I'm the guy that raised the hand. Or I'm the lady that raised her hand. I, I need peace in my life. I need hope. My soul is empty. Is there anybody like that tonight? Just raise your hand up and catch our eye. Anybody like that? Anybody? Okay, I see you over here. Anybody else? Anybody in the balcony? Just catch our eye. Raise your hand. We just want to see who you are. Okay. A couple of you raised your hand. Praise God Almighty. You're in the right spot. When we're done with this evening and just another song or two, I'm going to ask you to come down and take this dear pastor by the hand. And you know what? I haven't known him long, but I can tell you this. I know there's for sure uh, just a kindred spirit in the sense that he would love to introduce you to Christ. Because we want you to have the hope that we have. And can I just ask you one more thing before we wrap this thing up tonight? How's your worship? You know, my guess is most of us are in this room. And you know what? When I was a little teenage boy with zits all over my face trying to learn how to sing and trying these songs in this room, I didn't know how to worship. I didn't. I was just learning like we all are. But you know how you learn to worship? You just live. And every day you get up, you just commit your life and your heart and your spirit to the Lord. And through the process of life, he teaches you these things. And I just want to know, where's your worship tonight? Have you let Jesus sort of settle down into the bottom of your life? Or is he right at the forefront as king of your heart? If he's not, maybe tonight's a good night to just kind of do a, a reverse pivot and, and go back to him and ask him to just grow close to you again. Because you know what? I don't know how we can live in this day and age without walking with him. It's a horrible, horrible world we live in. But thanks be to God, we have a hope that's eternal. And it's only through Jesus Christ. So if your worship is 
suffering, I just want to ask you tonight to turn back to him. He hasn't gone anywhere, by the way. It's us who moves. Turn back to him. Okay, so you can lift your heads and open your eyes. We're halfway through. I just wanted to tell, I'm just kidding. That was a joke. But um, I do want to tell you how much I just really have enjoyed being with you tonight. Can we do one song with you that just sort of reminds us of, of, you know, just watching the news and stuff. I just, I get so frustrated. And I feel like the church is so silent at times. And they talk about this silent majority in America um, being, you know, the evangelicals. Can I just say, and Pastor, maybe you're going to get mad at me for saying this. I just, uh, I just think that it's time that the silent majority stops being so silent. We have to tell the truth. And you know, they'll know us by our t-shirts. No, that's not right. What did Paul say? They'll know us by our TV program. No, that's not right. Oh yeah, they'll know us by our love. Love is the answer. I think Captain Tennille said that, but it started with Jesus. So, this little song reminds us of just what we believe and why we believe it. I've been doing this song all over the country just because it's resonating in the hearts and minds of people. So here's what I'm gonna ask you to do. I'm gonna ask you to sing it with me, just as a reminder and a statement of our faith. And then we're gonna close tonight with an old classic that I sang for the very first time in this room. So, <laughs> she's like, well, it's about time. Just hush, get on with it. Okay, so let's do this together. <laughs> this is We Believe, I want you to sing it with us, all right? Right, we can go ahead and stand together. Let's stand together and sing this song together. In this time of desperation
Okay, well, you better have a seat. Because you look around and you see all kinds of prophecies being fulfilled. As a matter of fact, if you listen real close, you can almost hear the sound of a mighty rushing And it's closer now than it's ever been. I can almost hear the trumpet as Gable sounds the call. We'll all be going home. Yes, we will. I look around and I see prophecies fulfilled. It's everywhere, it's everywhere. And there are signs of the time. Well, they're appearing everywhere. Well, I can almost see the Father as He says, "Son, go get your children around." Oh, and at the midnight cry, the bride. Christ, that's you and me, by the way, shall rise when Jesus steps up.
love y'all. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> Come on. Thanks for having me, everybody. Thanks for having me back. Thank you, Pastor. Hey, uh, hey, seriously, uh, thank you for having me. I, I don't know. I, I don't want that to end right there, man. I could hang out right there for a while, but... And I know we got to go. There's another game on and stuff, but I, uh, can I just have you, <laughs> can I just, can I, could you indulge me for two more minutes? And here's why. I, there's a song that I recorded a long time ago. Phillips, Craig, and Dean actually wrote it. You can stay on your feet. It's not real long. It's like eight minutes or something. I'm just kidding. But uh, Phillips, Craig, and Dean wrote this song, and then they decided not to put it on their album. And I can't remember which one of them that called me. He said, you want this song? And I listened to it and I said, heavens, yes, I want this song. And I don't get to do it very much, but I just standing in this room thinking about all those, all those times as a teenager and coming back and 25 years in a row, I came back and sang at that pastor's conference. And all the, the moments we had but pastor said something today at the very end of his sermon after we voted to sell the building over there. 8.5 million, hello, come on. But he said something that reminded me, man, perhaps the best days of First Baptist are yet to come. He reminded us of the words of Paul. But here's, here's, here's what I just want to encourage you with. Having done this now for 30 years, we've seen a lot of churches grow and a lot of churches die. And you know what it is, the difference? The presence of Jesus. Folks, you can have all the worship services you want to have, but unless the presence of the Holy Spirit of God is in this room, moving in the hearts and minds of people, then you, we've told, all we've done is have some songs and a little sermon. We are desperate for the Holy Spirit to move in our midst. And so would you do the pastor and the worship team a favor? And when you start coming into these services every Sunday morning, don't come with the spirit of what can I get. Come with the spirit of what can I give. And come with the spirit of worship. But you know what will really help? Is if you'll learn that worship is twofold, it's individual and corporate. And if you'll worship as an individual Monday through Saturday, I'm telling you what, you're going to come in here on Sunday morning filled up. And this little hour you spend in here won't be the one little time you get for the week. No, instead, you'll come in here with your cup running over. And suddenly that just translates into a room that's full of praise. And every once in a while, a little song will come along that sort of puts that all into words. So, in memory of all the times I had, but in honor of all the times yet to come in this room, I want to just give you this. The church is empty, but I just can't go home. So I linger for a moment in the dark all alone. And I'm so overwhelmed at how your spirit moved. I'm just glad that I was in this room. stories and no one knows but you the silent prayers answered tonight in these pews and I don't understand how you do what you do I'm 
just glad that I was in this room, great God in heaven, how wonderful you are, oh, you're still changing lives, and it humbles my heart that you Someone like me to play a small, to play a small part. So listen now. So tonight, as we stand here, we're reminded once more. That when any good happens, it's not about us, Lord. It's enough just to stand in the shadow of you. I'm just glad that I was in this room. God bless you, First Baptist. Thank you again.